Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right on my cue. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. But maybe we'll give, I don't know, a couple, like a couple more minutes just to see if anyone else joins us. Sure, sure. So is everybody from Texas, basically, that, uh, I'm no longer in Texas. I don't know if you yeah. know that. Where yeah. are you, Tammy? I'm in Maryland now. Uh -huh. So Solomon's Island. It's a uh -huh. little um, remote place. Uh, it's a peninsula, the, the western shore of the Chesapeake Bay. So, you know, Maryland is kind of shaped. It's got two fingers going in. You know, so uh, for the western you know a little town called Edgewater, Maryland? Of course I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's about uh, it's about an hour from me, hour north. <laughs> uh, my, my mother grew up there and that's where we would go all the all the time. So and she's buried there. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful house that you showed uh -huh. during? Oh, wow. Yeah. She grew up on a farm. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. It's still uh, Edgewater, is, you know, right outside of Annapolis and it's retained its rural um, look, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't know if, if there's any zoning protections or what have you, but it's, it's, it's quite lovely. Yeah. I haven't spent a lot of time in Maryland, but that whole area of the country I find so beautiful. Um, yeah. I just love it. I might just have to visit. I don't know. I'm just saying. Oh, anytime. <laughs> you know, I have a room for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, why don't we get uh, started with the okay. above tradition of a contemplative moment, contemplative meditation? Now, then I'll tell a little bit about abode and turn the 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 program over to Natalie. Natalie, would you like to lead us in a centering meditation? Sure. Yeah. So I call this, and we'll we'll revisit it during the presentation a little bit more in detail. But I call this opening the shop, and it's a way that I create a space for myself to do this kind of service and get myself ready um, to walk in um, to, to the work that I do. And so I invite you all to join me. If you'd like, you might wanna place one hand on your heart and one hand on your abdomen. If it feels good for you, there's an invitation to close your eyes and just take a moment to notice your breath Noticing its texture and temperature. And notice if that temperature changes from inhale to exhale. And if you'd like, you may start to consider the phrase, I am, perhaps saying I on the inhale, am on the exhale, softly to yourself, I am, I am. Maybe three more breaths with this attention. And then as you're ready, there's an invitation to bring your hands back to your lap, blinking open your eyes and take in the room around you a little bit at a time, noticing textures, light, color, patterns. And then coming back to our Zoom room. Welcome, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, just a few quick words about Abode Contemplative Care for the Dying and um, how we met Natalie. We are an end-of-life home, this one, as a matter of fact, here in San Antonio. And we were created uh, 10 years ago. We opened our doors a very lovely couple here in San Antonio, uh, Edwin and Patsy Sasek, 
had worked in hospice for many years, and they kept coming across people dying in less than ideal conditions, or maybe with no one to care for them around the clock, or a loved one who was just worn out and couldn't get their, their spouse or their partner over the finish line, or maybe it's somebody who had no home. And they had a vision of creating a beautiful place where people could come and receive the very best of end of life care at no charge. We run completely on donations and grants. Since we opened almost 10 years ago, we have cared for 420 San Antonians. That means 420 sweet people have died in our home, shared their last stretch of life with us. And of course we get to know their families, their friends, if they have families and friends, and if they don't, then we become those families and, and friends. Um, so they live with us in their last three months, three weeks, three days of life. Their hospice agencies come to Abode to provide their care. But as Natalie was saying earlier, hospice is a service. It's very rare these days to find a hospice facility because it's not profitable. Um, so we are a residential home short term where we just love you up until you're ready to go. And we have a very robust education program where we teach the art of contemplative living and dying and try to help people reduce their fears around death and dying. So this vision of a goddess walked across our doorstep a year or two ago and um, said she wanted to lead end of life yoga. And as a yoga fan myself, I said, okay, when can you start? <laughs> so she's not only started our bedside yoga program, she has also worked as a navigator. So she's done hands-on care of those end of life. And now she leads our end of life doula certification and our end of life yoga certification. So here she is, wild applause. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Very yes, well. I, I found um, Abode shortly after my mother died. And by offering work and, and working within the walls of this very sacred space, I was able to do a lot of my own healing. And so being in a community that's so welcoming and so much about the contemplative practices and, and living fully you know, we do not fear death and we live fully until we die is their vision. And so it's just an amazing place to come to work every day. And Mary's one of those people who never gives up on me. So I, I really appreciate her. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And I have a little slideshow presentation to share with you all. So yeah. You've come to the Abode End of Life Yoga Certification Info Session. This is a picture of me with shorter hair with my boyfriend, Ernest. Ernest looked forward to bedside yoga every Friday, which we offer at Abode um, at one o'clock every Friday. And we would gather around him, those volunteers and staff members who were available, to do yoga with him for about an hour, sometimes less depending on his energy. But we would go through simple movement practices, joint freeing series, gentle breathing practices, some energy work, um, some visualization and meditation. And I would always end with the chant Om Asatoma. So if you'd like, I would like to um, chant that for you three times just to kind of get us into um, the session and get into the right frame of mind and to think and honor Ernest with our chant. Om Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Vrityarnam Rityam Gamaya Om Asatoma Sat Gamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Vrityarnam Rityam Gamaya Om Asatoma Sat Gamaya 
Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya Vrityarnam Rityam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Lead me from darkness to light, from illusion to truth, and from death to immortality. Peace, peace, may there be peace. So this certification is a 60 hour training for yoga teachers, therapists, doulas, hospice workers, anyone who's drawn to serving those who are dying. And we start our first cohort on Saturday, August 10th. So I mentioned this a little bit when we did our um, opening contemplative practice, but I like to teach the art of opening the shop. And this is something that I've been thinking about as an actress as well. Um, when we step onto the stage or we step into the work that we're doing, there's an opportunity for us to create a healthy boundary between the life that we're coming from and the service that we're providing. And then also on the flip side, closing the shop so that whatever we encounter during our work, whatever heaviness that load is, it's something that we can release and let go of so that we can step back into our daily life. So this is just a little practice. We usually start with centering and I always like to encourage people to feel their breath and feel how their body responds to the breath. And sometimes just even placing feet on the ground, rolling shoulders back and down and settling into the body, then noticing the breath is a technique that I like and that really helps to center me. Other people have other things that they do, but this is an opportunity for people to kind of fill in the blanks and create their own opening the shop technique. Um, for me, it's my sadhana, it's my daily practice. Usually then after I center, I do a little bit of breath work. Um, so why don't we all explore bees breath together? This is something that Ernest really loved. He loved the humming. And so if you'd like to join me, you're invited to take your two middle fingers of both hands and gently place them on your eyes. We don't want to press into the eyeballs, but letting the fingers rest gently on the face. The thumbs will plug the ears, thus shutting out all um, sensory input. We're going to focus on the vibrations on our lips with 10 humming breaths, humming on the exhale and start whenever you're ready because we're in a virtual space here. I'll meet you at the end. Mm. Notice the aftertaste of the vibrations on your lips, in your face. Maybe there's some heat in your ears.
usually that really does the trick to get me into the present moment. Um, it's one of my favorite practices. And for me, in dealing with this population, we want to meet people where they are. So we'll get into kind of how yoga and end of life come together, but the humming can be a nice alternative to chanting Om. So if we're not quite sure how to enter into um, kind of that belief system that our guest may have, a simple humming exercise might be a way that we can connect with them without any other um, thoughts or beliefs attached to that. After that, um, part of my opening the shop sadhana are gentle stretches and movements. Sometimes that's as simple as rolling shoulders back and down. So if you'd like to join me on that, that might feel good. First in one direction and then the other. Sometimes I inhale my arms up, reaching up and looking up and exhale arms down. If you'd like to join me, let's do this four more times. Just getting some bigger movements in, really connecting breath with movement. Synchronizing the movement of our bodies and the breath. Another option might be making a, just a gentle fist and just tapping our body, going up and down the limbs, under the arms, across the chest, just kind of waking up the body. <clears throat> down the legs. My nephew loves King Kong right now, so he loves doing the King Kong. It's <laughs> kind of waking that up. And then just shaking off, just shaking out the hands. This could be a long practice. You can do a whole yoga sequence here if you'd like, or just something simple. If you've arrived at the place where you're going to be providing your services, you just want to take some time in the car to center yourself and open your shop. It can look many different ways. This is just my blueprint. And then I like to end with an intention. Um, when we did our centering work at the beginning of our Zoom call, we did that sentence, I am. And so I like to sometimes finish that thought. I am here. I am calm. I am right where I need to be. I am capable of doing difficult things. Those are some examples. So if any of them resonate with you, feel free to use it. And let's go ahead and just repeat whatever we choose to ourselves three times. And our shop is now open. So self-care and setting these healthy boundaries around this work is going to be one of the major components of the end of life yoga training. Because as we serve others, we want to make sure that we help preserve our own energy and not completely deplete ourselves in this kind of work. So this will be part of the training, finding your own opening the shop sequence, finding your own closing the shop sequence, and then creating a daily pattern, a daily sadhana where you practice this um, so that it just feels as natural as brushing your teeth. All right, the question y'all came for, well, maybe one of them, how does yoga relate to end of life care? So a lot of people on the call here are already yogis. And so, you know, oh my gosh, it's a natural, natural connection between yoga and end of life care. But for the majority of the population, when they think of the word yoga, they conjure up an idea of skinny white woman bending in crazy positions and spandex in a hot room. 
And while there's space for all sorts of different practices of yoga, we are not about that kind of yoga when it comes to end of life care. We focus a little bit more on the subtler practices, meeting our guests where they are, and um, really trying to make them as comfortable as possible at the end of life. I love some of these. So yoga, as um, our wonderful CEO, Mary Thorsby said, yoga is about being in the moment, the very foundation of our contemplative practices at abode. It's all about the breath, which is the last thing we take before we die. And my favorite pose, Shavasana, is also known as corpse pose, which is a great match for abode. A little gallows humor for you. But, you know, the corpse pose, when they came up with that name, they didn't just choose it by accident. Oh, we need to call it something. We'll choose corpse pose. In a yoga practice, when you get to Shavasana, that's the time when you invite all of your limiting thoughts, your limiting beliefs, your limiting emotions, you invite them to die. And so here, um, we do the same so that we can send people on a really smooth journey to wherever's next after death, letting them release all of those limiting thoughts, emotions, and um, ideas. As you all know, yoga is so much more than physical postures. So for our training, we're really going to lean heavily on the philosophy of the Panchamaya Kosha model. Pancha means five. Maya, I like to think of as illusion. Kosha as a sheath. And so if we think of the center of our being as Atman, the authentic self, that which is eternal, that which is part of everything, as we die, we start to peel away some of those layers as we get closer and closer to our authentic self. And so in our training, we're really going to pair this philosophy with the stages of death. Barbara Carnes, known as the godmother of hospice, puts together a really nice timeline of what to expect when people die, what you might see, how they exhibit some of their behavior, how they present. And our very own um, president of our board, San Antonio hospice nurse uh, Beverly Tuomala gives a beautiful presentation on the stages of death too, and how we educate our families on how that looks. Well, here we'll meet that model with the Panchamaya Kosha model. And as we encounter our guests to serve, we'll see where they are in the dying process and what kinds of yoga practices we can explore with them at the moment where they are. One example is the first layer, the Anamaya Kosha, the food body. This, I, 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 I associate this with the earth element, but the physical body, the muscles, joints, bones, hair, and skin, those are the things that we usually start to see the transition happen first. We start to see the body weaken. We start to see the muscles begin to atrophy. The strength begins to sap arms and legs become heavier and heavier. We even see eating patterns start to change, skin and hair begins to thin. And so as we encounter one of our guests in this way, there are certain things that we can do to meet them where they are. I like to do the joint freeing series. I like to do a little bit of bees breath. Um, depending on where they are, a body scan meditation, just to take them through their body. Mudras are really effective too. And so using all of the different elements of yoga, yoga therapy, and the different tools that we have in our toolbox, we'll go through each one of these. We'll take a, a week for each one of these um, koshas and see how we can serve the individual who's dying with yoga practices and, um, and uh, tools. Thanks. So what is the abode end of life certification? The abode end of life certification is 60 hour training for yoga teachers, therapists, chaplains, hospice care workers, anyone who wants to serve the dying. So we'll provide a combination of classroom curriculum, which we're going to hold at this beautiful studio in San Antonio called Pure Prana Path. 
It's just steps away from our headquarters at Abode. So it'll give students an opportunity to be real close to serving people who are dying and then classroom experience. So in our classroom curriculum, we'll explore the different techniques in caring for the dying, kind of meeting where they are along the Panchamaya Kosha model, different philosophies, different texts, yogic texts that mention dying, ethics practices, what's the best way to work with someone who's dying, intake forms, assessments, HIPAA protocols, all of those things so that we can make sure that we have a seat at the table with the medical professionals that we partner with in hospice. And then there'll be opportunities to practice teaching with the cohort and then with the guests at abode. So every student will have an opportunity to work with the beautiful souls who are dying at abode and the staff and volunteers. So you'll have plenty of people to practice with and to care for. These hours can be applied as Yoga Alliance continuing education credits, but also probably more importantly, right, they prepare you for the experience of death and dying, your own mortality, your loved ones, and relative strangers. So what I found in just working with Abode for the past two years or so is that I've become very comfortable with my own mortality and making sure that I adhere to the vision of abode, that I live fully until I die. And I think for me, yoga really helps me do that. So that's the certification. Who is this training for? We've said it many times, anyone, <laughs> not just yoga teachers, not just yoga therapists, but anyone who's drawn to the death doula or death cafe movements anyone who wants to bring a deeper understanding of their own end of life journey, or whoever wants to explore the whole process of serving people who are at the end of life and people who are grieving the loss of a loved one. So we'll spend a whole module on grief and different techniques and approaches to working with families and friends who are grieving at different stages of the grief process. As we all know, grief is not linear neither is death. You can't just have this is how it's going to look and this is what you do at each step, but it gives you tools in your toolbox for working with people who are dying and grieving. This is a wonderful picture of our, our sweet Wilma. Um, we were doing bedside yoga with her outside. We wheeled her outside on a beautiful San Antonio afternoon in the spring. And John is in the back there. He's one of our end of life navigators who is kind of the epitome of contemplative care. He's just a real sweet soul. And then one of our wonderful volunteers, Susan Moreno. Yoga teachers are able to apply this training to continuing education requirements through Yoga Alliance. And so there's 60 hours total, 45 contact hours and 15 non-contact hours. So those of you who need to fulfill those requirements will be able to do so with the certification too. Natalie, what, what are contact hours and non-contact hours? Great question. So I had to nerd out and figure this out, but there's, there's different ways that Yoga Alliance um, breaks up um, training hours. And so a lot of them are, there's a section on teaching protocols and training. So like kind of teaching people how to teach and do the work themselves. There's methodology and um, uh, anatomy and physiology. So really working on the body and all of that. And then yoga principles and ethics and philosophies. So it's broken down in different ways um, so that you can apply um, those types of contact hours. And then the non-contact hours will be time that you're not spending in the classroom that you'll do as volunteer work um, with our, our guests at Abode and the staff and volunteers. But great question. Yeah. When is this training? We have secured the space with Pure Prana Path, the beautiful yoga studio that I mentioned before, um, for select Saturdays and Sundays in August and September. So it's five continue, uh, consecutive weekends and we're in the afternoon, so they're not full days. Um, there's a wonderful 
cafe right next to the studio. So if people want to get a nice brunch before, uh, they'll be able to do so. Uh, there's a lot of beautiful green space around that people can spend time in before um, the hours that we'll spend together. But these are the dates, August 10th and 11th, August 17th and 18th, 24th and 25th, 31st, September 1st and September 7th and 8th. Where is this training? It is an in-person training. So we'll be um, doing all of our classroom uh, work at Pure Prana Path. And here's a beautiful picture of the studio. So you see there's a lot of green space right outside the window. And I thought that was really important since abode, the home of abode also has such a natural element to it. The backyard is full of these beautiful live oak trees and a beautiful labyrinth. And I wanted to find a space that was close to abode, but also has the natural element so that people feel refreshed and renewed while they're doing the training as well, since this can be challenging work. But the studio is just down the street from Abode Contemplative Care for the Dying, uh, this beautiful home in San Antonio that is pictured right behind Mary's little, yeah, that's a, an artist's rendering of the home. What is the cost? $1,200, but we have payment plans available and we'll meet you where you are. Um, you can pay in full right up front. You can ha do half and half, um, half up front and half on the first day. You can do it in thirds and fourths, monthly, whatever works for you. Um, the wonderful thing about this payment is that it is a tax deductible donation to Abode. So your money goes not just towards the, the, the program itself, but also the mission of Abode Contemplative Home for the Dying, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Yeah. And that's what I have. So I wanna open it up to see if there are any questions or comments or concerns. Mm -hmm. Um, naturally, I have one about the in-person. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I still have so many friends and family and, uh, well, no family, but friends um, in Austin and just trying to figure out that time. And luckily, it's August. I mean, I was thinking it was starting next month, so I do have yeah. time to, to figure it out. Um, is there, is this an ongoing training? Do you do this annually? Are you going to do this annually? And is there an opportunity perhaps in the future to do some um most of it online like live online which counts as contact hours by the way for yoga alliance and then maybe you know some concentrated time for our, our um uh, i'm not sure what you call it the practicum the you know working with clients is that is that a possibility in the future Are you... it's definitely on our radar so okay. i think for this first cohort we'll probably do it all live yeah but you haven't been the first person to ask that question so Thank i'm you. glad you brought it up on mm -hmm. this um, it is definitely something that we're looking into offering annually for sure mm -hmm. and kind of in a hybrid format because we want this kind of work to expand beyond just mm -hmm. San Antonio. I mean, we really, we really want to serve our population and our community, but there's such a need for it and a mm -hmm. need for this kind of work and information and education that it, it's my dream that we make it something that is virtual or at least hybrid. And yeah. that you would identify uh, people in your community that you could do the practicum with mm -hmm. um, and the, you know, the, the service. Yeah. Or problems. even or even going down to San Antonio for a week to do the practicum or something like that. Yeah. No, I mean, this is really unique. I've been looking for something like this. And this this is unique. And I know you, and I know it's going to be yeah. good. <laughs> I, I hope you, yeah, I hope this big Broadway is... show tunes in it too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think, yeah. you know, it, it's something, and it, it, this is similar to our doula training as well. Mm -hmm. Our doula training is the, I, as far as I know, it's the only training that has hands-on mm. um, exposure, hands-on mm -hmm. practice that we require of our students. And so we wanted to do the same thing with the yoga too. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to learn something online and be like, mm -hmm. oh, that's cool information. I might use it someday. Mm -hmm. but, that, but it's another thing to really practice with your cohort, practice 
with people who are actively dying to get used to being around people absolutely 100 percent. and that's what that's what drives that's what i'm saying this is totally different like mean, that yeah, yeah. you know for yoga yeah. trainings like, I mean, you know how long i've been in this this field it's um i, I forgot the the statistic but something like 92 percent of people who go through trainings don't actually end up using their certification I and i think that's because there's no practical the you know practical application where you get yeah. to practice yeah. it's just getting over that hump like oh i need more training like no you actually did it you were doing it <laughs> you know so yeah. um, and that's everything you know you, you learn so much in a way i'm really well, excited I mean, i'm going to try to make this work i really am um I that. That yeah would be such a cool Full circle like a, for me. In an Airbnb <laughs> for a month, right? you know, somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. Like just make it, make it. You know, whatever, yeah. whatever you can do, that would be really cool. I think yeah. there's yeah. an Airbnb down in that area in Los Los Patios. Uh, yeah, let me make a note to look into it because that would really be ideal if you stay. I mean, I can I can really be anywhere. Most of my work is virtual, and I'm still in school, forever perpetual student. But I would have to be able to bring my golden retrievers and my cat. So exactly. absolutely, yeah, we, anyway. love, we love our furry friends. Yeah. So Suzanne, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to dominate the time. So. <laughs> no. okay. yeah. yeah, it's um, it it it's. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. It's it's so it's so we're so excited about this. And I yeah. think just, you know, starting some, you know, we want to start. And then as we continue to offer the cohorts, the training annually, like how can we make it um, accessible for all? But it would be great to especially have Suzanne, you and Genevieve take and then take the information to your communities as well. I mean, I think that's our big dream is yeah. that we have that ripple effect. Yeah, I just wish we could also take a boat and, you know, <laughs> the whole concept. It's uh, There's really not a lot like it, is it? Are there? No, I think when a boat opened, there were 15 other end-of-life homes throughout the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, now there are 32 and mm -hmm. another 30 that are under development. Let's see. So it is a concept that is expanding and it, you know, it just takes time for people to catch on to it and replicate. And we're totally supportive of that. There needs to be more abodes. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, it's just beautiful. Yeah. We, ad we adhere to the abundance mindset. So mm -hmm. the more we can see people taking this work and doing their own um, end of life trainings and care and all of that the better, the better. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So we have some more information. Um, I can try to, I'll put the link to um, the Abode website in the chat. Mm -hmm. Let me just get out of this. And that way- Are you um, gonna send the recording out too? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to just bear with me while I find it. Okay, then, this, is my, um, this is my age speaking, but I have never been able to copy text oh, in a chat. Can you, oh, can, yeah. can you copy it? I can walk you through it. It's very okay. exciting. Um, <laughs> I turned 60 this year, so that's my excuse for everything. <laughs> hey, I'm almost 50. I'm so excited. I can't wait to be 50. Are you really? Oh my gosh, you look 30. You still look 30. <laughs> no, you're sweet. It, it's the wonders of this ring light. Um, yeah, yeah, I got one too. Look <laughs> through my glasses. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, there we so go. So if I usually just, when you go into the chat, you can just click on it and it'll open a website. Um, if you go, yeah. Oh, I see. You open the website and you copy the URL because I try to copy. Anyway, we're not going to go. Oh, through yeah. That. But then it's it's open in your browser and then like after yep. we're done. Gotcha. Yeah. Play around. But cool. on that page, um, mm -hmm. there is an application. So if anyone is ready to take that leap, there is that application that we ask you to fill out just so we can get to know you better and, and what your interests are um, in the program. There it is. Suzanne, how did you hear about, I think you connected with me on Facebook. I, I did. I got it. Um, you know, Facebook hears everything and watches everything you do. So. <laughs> I know, I really you know, know. a lot about me. 
um, and it, I, you know, I don't consider it to be a bad thing um, because it got me here. It gets me to where I'm going and what, what I need to find out. So um, no, I'm, I'm very interested in um, just uh, working yoga with something like this. I think it could have been very helpful um, in my home. Mm, mm -hmm. so my husband just passed in the end of August. So and I moved from Connecticut to here. I've been in Connecticut for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So I have an older son here and I have my um, younger son and my grandson with me. So, um, and I'm just, you know, continuing on with, um, I pretty much work for myself anymore. I've been a cosmetologist for 30 years. i um, been a yoga teacher since 2018. And, um, you know, I worked with TBI and uh, PTSD and a lot of, a lot of that. I had big, I had pretty big groups. I had 30 group of 32, um, in one of my classes mm -hmm. and, um, then I don't know, this just seems like a kind of the next step and segue in and whatever it is I'm going to continue to do here because I'm also on another mentorship for um, meditation practices and, and teaching um, throughout this year at the end, through the end of December. So this would be a nice compliment. And then, yeah. you know. I oh, and you could bring so much. Being you called could bring to do with it. Things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we uh, do meditation at a boat. We have two two weekly groups. I hadn't thought about teaching people to teach meditation. Well, that might be helps. in the future for us to look at. So it's it's helpful to it's been helpful to the people I've worked with anyway. Yeah, and um, I'm still I'm doing workshops for a couple of the studios back in Connecticut, and I work with my own people online. So I'm always open to in in person settings as well, you know. Yeah, I'm Even just thinking. Yet more things for us to offer, Natalie. But uh, I love the idea of a session. You know how to meditate because we we do have meditation, and I struggle with it. Um, you know, a lot of people do. It, yeah, uh, but I go uh, every week. Yeah, because you're doing it. <laughs> yeah. I it's it's like, okay, you're still doing it. You know? practice, you're, going you're, perfect. you're doing it. You're it's doing right. It but that could be a nice thing to offer. How how to meditate. Mm -hmm. huh, okay, I'll add that to my list. I know it would have helped my husband quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, if he'd have kind of been able to work that in, you know? Mm -hmm. So, well, we've talked about that a lot. Um, you know, once you're bed bound, I'll just will never forget when we had to tell this woman she just could not stand anymore and we weren't strong enough to support her. We had to say, you, this is it. You've got to stay in bed. And she looked at us and said, well, what am I supposed to do all day? Mm -hmm. And I mean, oh, I yeah. just thought, wow, is that not the million dollar question? What are we supposed to do all day when we're bed bound? Meditation is part of that answer. Bedside yoga is part of that answer. How do we entertain ourselves for however long we are bed bound? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Well, Just, Suzanne, we would love to um, have you take a tour if you're in San Antonio. Oh, Genevieve, hi. you as well when you come to visit. But yeah. yeah, Suzanne, if you're in town, We'd love yeah, I, I'm here. I we we're, we're completely moved into this rental, you know, mm -hmm. until I'm ready to buy something. So yeah, yeah, we are. I am here. <laughs> Great. I'll follow up with you, and we'll schedule a tour. And we That'd be fantastic. More. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Suzanne, thank you for sharing your story. Actually, we have similar stories. I was married for 27 years. I lost my husband, but three years ago. So um, we all have different journeys, but I've I know the depth of of. Yeah. But yeah, we right. were just, we were married for 35. It's a lifetime. It's a lifetime. But thank you for sharing that. Sure. People. Yeah, yeah. All well, right. anything else? No? No? All right. We'll send the link out if you know of anyone else who might be interested. The more, the merrier. Okay.
My people, most of the people I know right now are in Connecticut, but there may be someone who might want to check and check in with you that I know of. So we'll see. All right. Yeah, yeah th this will be your cohort. So I want to fill it. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate the time, you oh, know, yeah. just yeah. that you're offering it. So yeah, well, glad I followed up with it. Yeah. I'm going to try to make it work. So, All right. So, I love nice. it. However, we can help. Sounds great. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll send the link out to you as soon as I figure out where it went. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I got it. It's uh, is it different than the one you put up here in the chat? The recording. Oh, the link to the recording. Oh, the, oh gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I saved it to my computer instead of to the cloud like I normally do. So <laughs> I'll figure it out. Thank right. you so much. We can do it again if we need to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, everybody have a great night. Thank yeah, great you. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Nice, nice to meet you all. all. Mm -hmm. Nice Take to meet care. you all. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, can you stay on? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We can stop the recording. That was just great.